Hi there. In this video, we will talk about how to create a simple power-up uh, in a 2D game within Unity. Previous videos, we talked about how to create moving platforms, uh, create the character movement, and then another video, we also created these uh, moving or rotating um, pickups. So the power-up is going to be kind of similar to uh, the startup for the pickup. And we're going to use some of the basis that we set up for the pickup. So look at the previous video on pickups as a good starting point but uh, we're going to create a power-up that gives the op option to adjust something with the player. So we'll do something simple like the player movement. So when we hit play, uh, we don't have anything right now with the player movement, but basically uh, I have a default speed and maybe we can set it up where we have the power-up. When I collide with the power-up or trigger that power-up, that will increase my speed or double my speed or triple my speed. And uh, that will wait for 2.5 seconds. That power up will affect the character for 2.5 seconds. And then um, we can uh, turn off that power up. So it goes right back to the default speed for the character. We do a whole bunch of other things with power ups, but this is just going to be a, just the starting point here. All right, so let's do another capsule. So we're going to create a new 2D object, sprite, and we'll do a capsule. We're going to go up to transform and reset this. And we're going to call this one power up. And we'll say power up speed. Power up speed. Because we can have other secondary power ups that do other things as well. I'm going to go to my sorting layers and add, I created a pickup sorting layer earlier, which means uh, it's going to be in front of the other objects. So I'm adding my pickup sorting layer. Um, and then any kind of thing my character can pick up or interact with can be added to my sorting layer. Let's add some different color. Uh, so we got some greens, I don't know, maybe a blue. Do a bright blue this time. Why not? We're gonna make it different than anything else that's in our scene. So we can visualize this. Let's make it uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So maybe it's the same uh, size as my yellow pickups, but it's just blue. So we know it does something different. All right, there we go. And uh, we're gonna add a rigid body. So we'll do rigid body body 2d and then we'll add a capsule collider to this okay all right we're gonna come back and make some adjustments here to that but uh, let's go into our player movement script so here's my player movement script and make some adjustments here so we have our public float of the character speed already set up and we're gonna use that to our advantage here and our default speed is let's look at our player in Unity is set to 10. So we want to multiply that by 2. So that'll be twice as fast. Hopefully we'll be able to see that. And what we're going to use is this on trigger inner 2D. We already have a section that says if this object is triggered with a collision of something called pickup, then we're going to destroy that other object. We're going to do something very similar here, uh, but Instead of destroy, we just go down underneath that and we're going to do another if statement. And we're going to repeat the same action, but we're going to call this if uh, other dot game object dot compare tag. It's going to be the same as what we did before. Open parentheses, open quotations, and we're going to call this one power up speed. We're going to create a new tag called power up speed. I'm going to close the quotation, close the two parentheses. We're going to return down and open up and close curly brackets. So what we want to do is we want to take our existing speed and speed equals speed times two. And we'll do semicolon. So what that'll do is it'll take our existing speed, whatever that is, multiply that by two, and that's going to be our new speed. All right, so let's um, let's just save control S and let's go test this out so in unity so to update that script let's see we got oh that's right let's see collider 2d does not contain a definition for game object I misspelled game object so let's go back in here game object there we go spell check all right there we go Okay, so a couple things we need to change. Uh, in the pickup or the power up speed, 
we need to go to our rigid body and we don't want it to fall down if we have it as dynamic with gravity let's change our gravity to zero let's see zero and then body type we're going to change that to kinematic now that's going to reduce out the gravity as well but basically this object is going to stay put uh, in kinematic and we're also going to change the capsule collider 2d to is trigger there you go all right so if i hit play if I move this around, there's my speed of 10. If I move over, so move back and forth, you can kind of see that. If I move over that collider, let's wait for my platform to get out of the way. There you go. That should change my speed to 20. Let's see if it's actually doing it. So player, speed 10. Don't know if it's working. I'll have to come back and see. Nope. Okay, so we need to make a couple other adjustments here. Oh wait, we didn't add the uh, tags, so no wonder that isn't working. All right, so let's go back, select our power up speed. We need to add the tag. So let's go up here at the top, add tag, and we're going to call this one power up speed. Make sure we spell that the same exact way in here. Power up speed. All right, now if we play, and let's select the player. Make sure we look at the speed down here. All right, so as we're playing, speed is 10. If I hit this, should work now. There we go, it doesn't look like it's changed. All right, so let's see if we can troubleshoot. Power up speed, oh, we didn't add the tag. I don't know how we didn't add it there. Okay, so go back to tag, power up speed. All right, now power up speed tag, now everything should work. There you go. Select our player, let's go down, look at our speed, speed's 10. Okay, if I collide with that, now my speed is 20. I can move much faster. See my speed change to 20 down here? Well, the issue is that now my speed is just 20 all the time. And every time I go over that collider, that doubles it again. So now my speed is 40. If I go over that collider again, I can get up there. There you go, now my speed is 80. Oh, so now I got outside of my screen here. Let's just pause. Okay. So that could cause a lot of issues if I continue to double and double and double my speed. Let's go into our script. Make sure we're out of play mode. Go into our script and we need to make an adjustment. We need to first uh, destroy the power up after I use it once because I don't want to continue to increase my speed. So I'm going to use the same kind of destroy object from earlier. Underneath that speed times speed or speed equals speed times two. Let's do destroy other dot game object so that's going to destroy the object with a tag called power up speed and then the second thing I want to do is uh, only allow this to affect the player for a certain amount of time all right so what I need to do is actually create a new independent function for this so let's go down underneath our void trigger and we're going to call an enumerator uh, function. So instead of void, I'm going to type in IE numerator. Okay, so it's, in a, it's a numerator. And we're going to title this one stop speed up. I'm going to do open and close parentheses. Okay, and we're going to do open and close curly brackets. And then here's how we create the numerator. Basically, it's going to look for it, uh, look for however many seconds we want this to. Uh, to last for and then in this stop speed up enumerator uh, function we want to divide it by two again so that resets it back so we're going to do yield the word yield space return yield space return we're going to do new we're going to it's basically a, a timing a timer new wait for seconds new wait for a second so yield return new wait for seconds then we need to tell it how long to wait for so open parentheses we'll do two and a half seconds so 2.5f for float close parentheses semicolon at the end all right so then underneath that after we wait for five seconds we want to reset back to uh, default speed so then we're going to do again speed equals speed divided by forward slash two so in our if your game object collides with a tag called power up speed, then multiply the speed by two. 
and destroy that object. And then what we want to do is wait 2.5 seconds and then return back to regular speed, which is speed divided by 2. Right. Now there's our new function we've created. Now we need to call that new function after we have destroyed the object and, and, and doubled the speed. So underneath the uh, on trigger enter 2D for our speed times 2, return underneath destroy. And I'm going to choose start coroutine. which means as this other function is going on, as the other command is going on above that, after those two things have been done, then start a new routine. And we're going to call this one stop speed up. Open and close parentheses and a second parentheses and then do semicolon. Okay, so basically start coroutine and then, well, not stop e, stop speed up, which we'll call this function that we created down here. Let's save. All right, so there's our code to adjust it so we can interact with the power up. It's going to multiply the speed of the player, destroy that power up, and then start a 2.5 second uh, time delay. And then after those 2.5 seconds are over with, then it's going to reduce the speed by uh, divided by 2 back to the original speed. Right, let's see if we got any errors. Nope, we're good. Alright, let's make sure our uh, player is selected and let's hit play. Alright, so our speed is 10 by default. And we come in here and collide with that. Here we go, so our speed's 20. It can move around. After 2.5 seconds, it goes back to 10. So it's like working exactly how we want to. Let's play it again. Let's see. So our speed for our player is 10 by default. When I collide with it the first time, I'm going to change my speed to 20. It's going to last for 2.5 seconds. And then uh, I can go back to my default speed. So maybe 2.5 seconds is not enough. Maybe we'll do 5 seconds so we can increase that float value to 5, 5F, and save. Go back in and play again. And let's try again here. There you go. So now collide with it. Speed's 20. Now it'll last for five seconds. And now it's back to 10. So our power-up is working exactly how we want to now. The last thing we're going to do is create a uh, prefab of this. So I'm going to click and drag from power-up speed down into my prefab folder. Creates a prefab. I can now move my prefab wherever I want it to be. So maybe over here We'll have one prefab there. I can duplicate this. Have another one over here. There we go. And we go play test. So now if I go collide with that, I'm now running at speed of 20 for five seconds. And now I'm back to 10 for speed. Maybe we're gonna collide with that one. Now I'm back at 20. It destroys that game object, increases my speed by twice the amount. Now I have a simple way to create a power-up. There's many other ways we can create power-ups. We can um, hurt the player with this kind of object as well. This could be something that damages health. This could be something that gives a different power-up, a flying ability or whatnot. But that's a basic way to create power-ups uh, in a 2D scale within Unity. If we have more than one power-up, we can create an empty game object now called power-ups. We can reset the transforms and then drag our two power up speeds underneath our power ups uh, empty game object so now that reduces the amount of vertical things that we have to see and everything is organized better in my uh, hierarchy tab as well alright that'll wrap up this video on how to create power ups